This is about what you might call a happy Heavenly Father's Day. It's something I think all of us can experience all the time. If you consider the truth of the following, that all of us deep down, whether we have discovered this or not, really want to know who our Creator is. And we want a rest, which is connected to that. Again, this is not necessarily understood or articulated in our own search, in our own minds as we go through life trying to find that rest, trying to find that connection, trying to find the understanding of who that person is, but that is where it's at. That's where you will find your rest in, in finding who that one is, your Heavenly Father. And I just wanted to do something that's, I think, not too long about that, that connects Old Testament Scripture with New Testament Scripture that goes to that whole search that man has that God wants to fulfill. He wants to give us that rest through that understanding, through that knowledge of who He is that only He can do. So it's kind of a twofold thing there. But going to Exodus chapter 33, starting in verse 12, it says, then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. So this is a pretty bold statement by someone that has been it's been said of Moses that he struggled with how he spoke and clearly he did not always want to speak to certain people like Pharaoh but he had a relationship with God yet he still wanted to know him better he knew God more than anyone and here he was basically challenging God but I think it's an amazing thing it really is get Moses is being who he is he is being that one we all are deep down he is being the one who wants to know his God I mean to say to God you said <laughs> and then go, now prove it, God. And that's pretty bold. But that shows where Moses was at. Not that I'm saying we should all be like Moses. You are who you are. I don't know if I would be that bold. But that's a pretty cool thing he's got there. He's really got a desire to know who his God is. Verse 13, Moses is speaking, continuing. He says, now therefore I pray, if, that's a big if, because he just quoted the Lord, that the Lord says, I know your name, and now you have also found grace in my sight. Again, he's like questioning him to make the Lord prove him. If I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. So he's saying, God, you said these things. But show me your way, so I know who you are. Remember that term, the way? When, in chapter 14 of John, when they, they are basically talking about the Father, and he says, I am the way. The way to what? The way to himself. Now, I'm going to get more into that, but I'm just I'm making a declaration for now, and you'll see that later. God directs you to himself by the way that is himself. So Moses is being really challenging here but I think in a way a friend would he was friends with God and then the Lord said in 14 and he said my presence will go with you and I will give you rest that says it all right there Moses is saying I want to know who you are I want to know why I have your grace why is your favor on me why is that true Lord you just said it well why is that true why because my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. That is one of the same thing. To know who your God is, is to have rest. At least in a very deep part of who you are. I know this world is full of turmoil, it's full of pain. It's just full of so much stuff and anger and sadness and everything. But you can still have something deep down within you that is resting. Because obviously Moses went through a lot of stuff before, during, and after this. 
But the Lord said, you will have rest because my presence will be with you. You'll have the presence of your creator with you. That's who's going with you. That's who I'm sending with you. I'm sending me with you. And it's the same for you and I. He sends himself with you. He came here and he came again and he's going to come again. The one who was and is and is to come. That is our God. That is our Jesus. That is who spoke to Moses right here. So now let me go to the New Testament scripture where the Lord connects this. And again, I say I want to keep this relatively short, but on your own, just go to before I start this part reading and, and, and pray to the Lord and ask him about this. Because I'm still, for many, many years, well over 10 years, I've been asking him about this. In Matthew chapter 11, he starts this whole thing in verse 20. And then at verse 25, no one has spoken. No one has spoken except Jesus. And at verse 25, it says, at that time, Jesus answered. Jesus answered Jesus and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. To babes. Remember, we're talking in spirit. The wise and the prudent, as in, I am so wise and I am so prudent. And the babes are the ones who know that they are a babe of God, a child of God. It's not my wisdom, it's not my prudence. It's his kindness, it's his love. I'm his little child. That's why he reveals it to you. He reveals it to everyone, but you can't see it. There's a block if you think, I am so wise and I am so prudent. That's what blocks you. That's what blocks all of us. That's what blocked me when I didn't see him the way I could have seen him. And the more I become like this in that attitude, the more I see him. Verse 26. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. 27. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. So I can just go back to 26 as a short little verse. I believe it's a statement both backwards and forwards. He says, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. So what seemed good in his sight? To reveal these things to babes and to hide them from the self-professed wise and prudent. And how does he reveal that? The same way he revealed it to Moses. Moses wanted to know. Moses said, you gave me a promise. Well, here I am, Lord. Here I am. You want to you, you said you'd show me who you are. You said you'd give me rest. You said I have your grace and your favor. I want to know that. I want to know you. I want to see that. I want to see you. So now he, he, he shows something here. I'm going to connect to another verse in another chapter, so stick with me. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Okay, you seem to have two people there. No one knows the Son. No one knows Him. He said He's the Son of God. He's standing right there. He says no one knows Him except the Father. Wait now. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son. So no one knows either one of them except each one of them. One knows the other, and the other knows the other one. Finishing that sentence. And the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. So he just said, no one knows who I am except the Father. And no one knows who the Father is except the one that I will show who the Father is. I'll show you who the Father is. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You see that? He just said in Deuteronomy, or he didn't just say he said it a long time before that, but I just read it. He will give Moses rest because his presence will go with him. His presence, the presence of the Lord God, the one who said, let there be light, the maker of the heavens and the earth and all that in them is, his presence, you will know him. And you will get rest through that. 
by knowing who he is. And he made that clear. So, he said, no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son will wills to reveal him. And then he says, come to me. If it's all about the Father, then why does he say, come to me? Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Those are all words of the Father. That was the Father speaking. That's why it is a happy Heavenly Father Day for me. Today and every day, at least when I remember it, I forget it sometimes, or I get distracted. But I know my Father, because my Father was standing right here on terra firma, and He was talking, and He showed me who the Father is. He is the Father. And here I'm going to prove it, because He said, No one knows who the Father is, except who the Son wills to reveal Him to. Well, in Matthew chapter 16, the Lord says, in verse 15, He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Well, in chapter 11, he said, No one knows who the Son is except the Father. And you can only know who the Father is if the Son will tell you who he is. And here he says, Only the Father can tell you who the Son is. You see that? The Father and the Son are one and the same person. It doesn't make any difference. The Father reveals to you who the Son is, or the Son reveals to you who the Father is. Jesus is the Father in flesh. And that is something to rejoice over. That is something to rest in. Your Father came here for you personally to save you. Save you. Your Father came here personally to give Himself for you. That's who He is. You can rest in that. And His presence will be with you and rest on you. And you will rest together with your Father. Yes, Jesus, your Father. He is the one who came to save you. That's who you're going to see when you see Him as He is. And you can have a happy Heavenly Father's Day every day and rest in the presence of the Lord Jesus, your Savior, your Lord, your Creator, your Master, your Teacher, your Brother, your Friend, and yes, your Father. You can rest in that if you believe in that. But you got to be bold enough to believe in that. And they saw it and they believed in it. And actually I want to go to just one more that proves this. I was going to put it in another lesson, but I think I'll go ahead and do it here. In John chapter 16, I think he says this pretty clearly about who he is. And they saw it, or at least partially they saw it, because this is something that takes time. It unfolds over time. It's something that gets in you deeper and deeper and deeper. I used to get it in a very basic way, and I'd still be challenged by all this this polytheism and stuff in the world that is so prevalent that it's just out and out tritheism and paganism and and the numbers are just so great against you it can be pretty daunting but the closer you get to him the less it matters that you're alone or that there's very few who see him because you know him you know him and he shows you things like I'm trying to show you here that's why we always say go to him in prayer and ask him about these things and he will reveal it to you but going to John chapter 16, sorry the light is just taking this out of my eyes, and I'm going to go to verse 23. He says, in that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. So he says in that day, he's talking about a day that's going to come. We're not going to ask Him anything. We're going to ask the Father in Jesus' name. We're going to ask Jesus, the Father. That's what He's saying. That is what He's saying. Until now, you have asked nothing in My name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. That joy, that rest, all that goes in 
to knowing the person of your God. And yes, you can know the person of your God. Don't believe any of that stuff that says, oh, our minds are too puny and we can't possibly know him. Just go to Jeremiah 9.24 and it says right there that you can know him. He goes on verse 25 these things I have spoken to you in figurative language but the time is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figurative language but I will tell you plainly about the father 26 in that day you will ask in my name and I do not say to you that I shall pray the father for you or you could say pray to the father he's saying you won't pray to the father because in that day you're asking my name, you're going to be talking directly to me because you're going to know who I am in that day. He says, you don't understand who I am yet. You don't know I'm the Father yet. 27, for the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from God. So see this, he's bringing them through a process where they're growing to understand what it means to be the Son of God, the Christ, the Son of the living God, as Peter said. Yes, he understood that. And he still had to teach them more what that really means. The Son of the Living God is God Himself. The Son of the Living God is the Father in the flesh. 28. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. 29. His disciples said to him, See, now you are speaking plainly and using no figure of speech. Now we are sure that you know all things and have no need that anyone should question you. By this we believe that you came forth from God. Think about it. His disciples said to him, and then there's just all this. I mean, were they all just like a chorus saying these words? Or is this like a summation of the things they all said to him? Or was there a representative speaking? I'm not sure, to tell you the truth. Was Peter speaking on their behalf? I guess that's the most likely one, but it's just says his disciples said to him and then there's just one line of speaking so in verse 30 it says now we are sure that you know all things and have no need that anyone should question you it just means that you don't need to prove yourself to say we know that you know all things th this shows that they are starting to get this understanding that he is the one true god because who else can you say of that knows all things there's only one who knows all things so he doesn't need to prove himself to anyone no one needs to ask him any questions i mean they did obviously a lot of people did and you can and i can but not for this for the purpose of him proving himself for the purpose of getting understanding and learning things so i can see who he is i can ask knowing i will get a truthful answer from my father by this we believe that you came forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? So you see that? He asked them, and he knows that they're getting it little by little, but they don't fully get it. They don't completely get it. And that's kind of a picture of life now. You get saved. You get an understanding. You realize your God is everything. You realize you are nothing. You realize it's all about his mercy and his grace. And then you slip off into religion or you slip off into something else or some whatever it is tradition of men rudiments of the world and it's not that so much that you forget it it's in your heart you and him are one together forever but you can still have to go through this whole process of really learning these things as in getting them from him not just from the the words on the pages of the book but really getting it from him through seeking him through getting to know him in a way that no one else can tell you. No book can tell you, no Bible study, no teacher, no sermon, no nothing. And he wants to be the one to tell you. That's the whole point of it. It's not about how far are you along. It's about who you are far along with. And getting to know him is what it's all about. So don't try to measure how much do I know him. Because it doesn't say that. Going back to Jeremiah 9.24. It's not about how much do you know him, it's just that you know him. Who can quantify such a thing? Am I supposed to be like Moses? Am I supposed to be like Abraham? No, I'm supposed to be like who I am, which is an individual who knows his God the way I know my God. And that is precious, and that is beautiful, and that is something that is just between me and him. I have something between me and him that no one else 
who exists or who has ever existed or who ever will exist has or has had and so do you everyone has that one unique perfect connection with their God his perfection with your imperfection you in a state of growth him in a perfect state of teaching and it goes on forever just like that just the two of you but that's where you get that peace that's where you get that rest knowing who he is trusting who he is and just live like that and you will have it happy Heavenly Father's Day every day at least to the extent that you can and no one can take that away from you in Jesus name Amen